iOS 16 introduces not only a ton of new features, but also several new settings that you might not have known about. So in this video, I'm going to show you more than 20 brand new settings only found in iOS 16 that you should strongly consider changing. And if you want to see every single new feature and setting in iOS 16, I will leave that video linked down in the description below where I show over 400 new changes in the software. All right, let's get into these settings to change. First up is rapid security response updates. So if you go into your settings and go to general software updates and then to automatic updates, you will see down at the bottom, we have a brand new toggle that says security responses and system files and you want to make sure that this toggle is turned on and what this does is it makes it quicker and easier for Apple to deploy security updates to your device without a full-on iOS update and it will happen in the background automatically sometimes it will require a restart but it's not going to require a full-on iOS update like years past. Apple did also mention that you can remove these security updates after they've been installed if you would like to. So to do that, you would just have to go into settings, general, and then about, and then tap on iOS version right here. And then you would tap on remove security updates. Now, if we head into our iCloud settings and then go to password and security, and then go all the way down to the bottom, you will see under advanced, we have automatic verification. And this is essentially a way to bypass captchas and Apple says bypass captchas and apps and on the web by allowing iCloud to automatically and privately verify your device and account. So Apple has added private access tokens to iOS 16, which are going to allow applications and websites to verify the legitimacy of your request based on your device and your Apple ID. So Cloudflare and Fastly have both already announced support for private access tokens. So this feature will already work on a lot of sites right now. Now the next one has to do with how your device charges. So if you go into your settings here and then go down to battery and then to battery health and charging, you will see at the very bottom here, we have a new setting called clean energy charging. And as you can see, it says that your iPhone is going to try to reduce your carbon footprint by selectively charging when lower carbon emission electricity is available. And then just like the optimized battery charging, your iPhone is going to learn your daily charging routine so it can reach full charge before you need to use it. So this could be something you want to keep on. It is on by default, but if you go ahead and press the off switch right there, you do get the option to turn off until tomorrow or just permanently turn off. So this could affect you know, how much your device charges when you plug it in. So you may want to turn it off for that reason, or you may want to keep it on just to be good, you know, for the environment and reduce your carbon footprint. And keep in mind this feature only works on iOS 16.1 and later. The next setting you need to change has to do with notes and the password that you use to lock your notes. So before you would only be able to use your notes password, like a standalone password for notes, but now you can unlock and lock notes with your on device passcode. So tap on view note you can see it just uses my face id right there and we are in so to do this go into your settings and then go to notes and then you'll see a new section here for password so from here we have use device passcode or use custom password so i think most people will want to make sure this is on use device passcode that way you don't forget a password that you only made for your notes and then also down here we have use face ids you do want to also turn that on to make sure you can lock and unlock your notes quickly next up is a setting in photos so if we go to our photo setting right here and we scroll down a little bit you will see that we have a new toggle for show featured content and i personally like to have this turned off so you can see it says allow featured photos and memories to automatically appear on this device in places such as for you and search in photos and in widgets. So basically, if you're like me and you don't like random photos just appearing throughout your device, you know, photos from four or five years ago, I would go ahead and turn this off. That way you don't have to worry about all of them popping up on your widgets and just randomly in your memories. Now, one of my favorite features in iOS 16 is dictation and more specifically, the auto punctuation that has now been added to dictation. So now if we go to our settings and then go to general and then down to keyboard and then scroll down, you will see under dictation, we have auto punctuation. You want to make sure that is turned on and let me give you a demo of how good this works. So I'm talking to Siri right now. And I'm going to, I just pause for a minute. So it should put a period. So you can see it did put a period there after a while. What's your name? How are you doing today? What time is it? 
And you can see it automatically adds in the question marks right there as I'm saying this, and I don't have to say period or comma or any of that. Now I can also start typing and the dictation is also running at the same time. So once I stop typing, I can start talking again and you can see we pick up where we left off. So dictation in general is awesome, but I do also really love the auto punctuation. So make sure that is turned on if you like that. Now I cannot mention the keyboard without mentioning the fact that iOS 16 introduces the haptic keyboard. So now if you go into your settings and go to sounds and haptics and then scroll down a little bit, you will see keyboard feedback. And from here, simply tap on that and you have a toggle in there for haptic. So now every time you press on a key on the keyboard, you will feel that keyboard feedback and it feels fabulous. And then right below that, you do also have the option to play haptics in ring mode or in silent mode. You can turn that on or off for each of them. Now you may have already noticed this next setting if you looked up at my status bar throughout this video, but you will see I have the battery percentage in the status bar now, and that is a new feature on iOS 16. So if you go to your settings and then go to battery, you will see up top, we have a new toggle for battery percentage. The next setting that you need to change is how your notifications appear on your lock screen. So you can see, this is what my notification center looks like. This is what my lock screen notifications look like. I just have the simple stack view, but you can change that. So if you go to your settings and go to notifications, you will see right up top under display as, we have a different layout for notifications that we can choose from. So we have stack, which is the one I just showed you. We also have list, which just shows an old, you know, classic style list view of all your notifications. Or we have count, which is a very clean look that just shows the number of notifications that you have, and that's it. It doesn't show you any context about them. And that's the one that I use on my main device. You can see right there, it shows I have one notification, but that's it. Now, if you tap on that, it will show the notification, but when you swipe down, it will go back and show just just the number of notifications. And I think that's cool. I just like how your whole lock screen's not filled up with notifications all the time. It's just much cleaner. Another setting you might wanna change is the spotlight search on the home screen. So before, in all previous iOS versions, all you had to do was swipe down to invoke the spotlight search. But now with iOS 16, you have an additional button on the screen that doesn't require you to swipe. You just simply tap on that and it will allow you to search via spotlight search. And when you change pages, you can see it will change to the page dots right before going back to saying search right there. Now, if you don't like that, you can turn it off. So if you just go to your settings right here and then go to home screen, you will see right there under search, it says show on home screen and you can turn that off and then it will go back to just the classic page dots. The next setting you might wanna change has to do with AirPods. So if you connect your AirPods to your device and you go into settings, you will see we have our little panel there for our AirPods. And if we scroll down on this section, you will see we have spatial audio. Now, right below that, we have personalized spatial audio. If you tap on that, you might wanna go ahead and configure your own personalized spatial audio. So when you do this, basically it's gonna use your true depth camera, your front facing camera on your iPhone to take pictures of your head and your ear shape and then Apple's algorithm is going to fine tune the audio experience to sound the best that it possibly can given the shape of your ears. So I did notice a difference in this personally and the audio quality, so it's definitely worth giving a try here on iOS 16. The next setting you need to change has to do with weather and especially if you live in a rainy area, like if you live in Florida, you will love this next setting to change. So in the weather application, just go to the th list view, just tap on the three little lines in the bottom right, tap on the three dots in the top right, and then go to notifications. And now you can see under current location, we have two new toggles for severe weather and next hour precipitation. So if you would like to receive push alerts for severe weather, like a thunderstorm warning or a tornado or a hurricane, you can get that. And then most importantly, next hour precipitation. So I get these on a constant basis, but I enjoy receiving them. That way I know when the rain is going to stop and end. And you can see up top, it says it works for rain, snow, and certain relevant severe weather alerts. All right, so we're gonna head back into our settings and go to accessibility, and then all the way down to the bottom to Siri, and then all the way down to the bottom of Siri, you will see that we now have a new toggle there for announce notifications on speaker. And you can see it says Siri announces your notifications to you over your device's speaker. So it no longer requires AirPods to announce notifications. And you'll see once you enable that, you do have another menu here for announce notifications where you can choose which notifications you want 
to be read out to you. And we have some additional Siri settings here as well. So we have call hang up. So now you can tell Siri, you could just say, hey, Siri, hang up. And it will actually hang up a phone call or a FaceTime call without having to press any buttons. And you can see that it only works on iPhone 11 and newer. And then if you go up a little bit, you could see we have Siri pause time. So we have default, longer, and longest. So if you find that Siri is kind of just cutting you off and not letting you finish, maybe you talk a little bit slow or you don't really know what you want to say all the time, you can now change that so that Siri pauses for a longer amount of time and lets you get everything out and let you ask Siri everything you want to ask. The next setting that you need to change is inside of your mail settings. So if you go to mail and then go all the way down to the bottom, you will see that we have undo send delay. And if you tap on that, you now have the option to turn that off or you can set between 10, 20, or 30 seconds to undo that message that you just sent. So me personally, I like having mine on 30 seconds, but I would recommend going in here and changing that. And if we go up a little bit in that same section, we have follow-up suggestions. So this will allow your device to send you suggestions when it may think that you need to follow up with a person. Like if you sent somebody an email and they haven't responded for a couple of days and your device determines that you sent a question in that email, it will show a follow-up suggestion at the top of your inbox. The next setting that you need to change has to do with an accessibility feature called Live Captions. And I think this is the best accessibility feature in iOS 16. So if you go to your settings, go to accessibility, and then scroll down, you will see that we have Live Captions. Now this is currently in beta, but it's working pretty well. And I've been using it for a while. So if you tap on that, I would recommend turning this on if you're somebody who would benefit from something like captions. So if you do this right here and you start playing a video so I'm just gonna go in and play a video real quick and you can see it will show the captions for everything being said in this YouTube video even though it is on mute so if you are somebody who is deaf or hard of hearing or for whatever other reason you can have live captions enabled and it is very beneficial and also the UI is great right here I like how you can put it out of the way or you can have this interface right here you could also pause it and you do also have the microphone right here as well and once you enable live captions if you go to appearance you can now change everything thing in here as well. So you could change the bold text, the text size, the text color, the background color. It could also change the opacity. And if you don't want this turned on system wide, but you only want it active in phone calls and FaceTime calls, this is where you would turn that on or off. The next setting you need to change is inside of Safari. So if you go to your Safari settings, if you go down to extensions, look all the way down at the bottom, you want to make sure that share across devices is turned on. So what this does is it will pick up on all of the other extensions on all of your other devices and it will put them in this little section right here that says on other devices you also want to make sure that share across devices is turned on for your settings as well so if you go down to the bottom of the section you can see that settings for websites you want to make sure that share across devices is turned on there as well the next thing you want to change is the depth effect on the lock screen so if you want to get this really cool effect where it looks like your subject is in front of the time you can do that by pressing on these three dots down in the bottom right hand corner Corner and you will see you have depth effect right there now keep in mind you cannot do this if you have a widget so if I added a widget right here you will see that I no longer can select the depth effect so that is one downside to this and it also does not work for every image you just need to make sure there's a clear defined subject and you can kind of move it around and see and cover up the time but it doesn't work you know just for anywhere apple has to determine when it works or not but once it works it looks awesome so if i add that right there you can see that now this is what my lock screen looks like the next setting you want to change has to do with siri so if you go to your settings and go to siri and search you will see right here we have automatically send messages if you tap on that you now get the option to automatically send messages when you ask siri to without needing to confirm so for example send a message to george talk send hello there you go you can see I did not say anything and it is in the progress of sending right now and it just sent that message without me having to confirm if I wanted to send it or not so you can turn that on or off for some people you might not want that to be on for others you might want that to be on so you can toggle that on right here and you can also change it based on if you're wearing headphones or in CarPlay and then let's change some settings surrounding focus modes so focus modes I still feel like are so heavily underrated I use them multiple times 
times every single day and I cannot imagine using my device without focus modes so if you go into a focus mode for example I'm about to go into the sleep focus mode so let's go into sleep right here and down here we have customized screens I would highly recommend going in here and customizing your lock screen your home screen and potentially also your Apple watch based on your focus mode. So for example, for sleep, I'm probably gonna want a lot of things to be dark. And that's why I have the astronomy on my lock screen. And instead of choosing one of my pages that's already on my home screen, we can create a new page. So if I simply tap right here on this one, you can see you could put in certain things right there that you would like to. So you could go to edit apps if you would like to change the applications right here. And this whole UI is awesome for changing the page. I'm just gonna do what it suggested, but if we go to add right there, we now have that home screen and of course you can change the watch as well so let's go ahead and invoke the sleep focus mode so let's go ahead and turn that on and now we can see this is what our home screen looks like and it also shows this down here at the bottom and it's much easier on the eyes especially here on the lock screen and if you wanted to take this a step further we do also have focus filters so if you want to add a filter to your focus mode this is where you can do it so for example let's say you're in a work focus mode so you only want to see your work calendar your work messages your work email you can do that so from calendar let's just go ahead and select our work calendar that way we only see all of our events and everything we have set up for work let's go ahead and add that and we're gonna add another filter for mail so now we're only gonna have our iCloud which is our work account that way we don't see all of our other junk in the Gmail account and we're gonna add that and you can go ahead and continue adding these different filters you can also add system filters like for example if you're in the sleep mode or in the sleep focus you may want to have your appearance set to dark instead of light and then finally at the bottom of the focus settings we have focus status and this allows us to choose our focus status on a per focus basis so it's now no longer just one big kill switch to either share our focus status or not now we can choose on a per focus basis if we want it to show up or not so if I didn't want people to see when I was driving or if I didn't want people to see when I was shooting a TikTok, I could turn those off that way they don't get that little message and messages that shows that their notifications are silenced so there you have it those are some of the first settings that you need to change after installing iOS 16 on your device now if you want to see every single new feature and change included in this update again I did make a very long almost two hour video showing over 400 new features and changes in iOS 16 so if you want to see that get your pop corn ready but that link is down in the description below and also open the cards in the top right of this video along with all my other iOS 16 videos but if you guys enjoyed this specific video I would appreciate if you gave this one a thumbs up and also subscribe if you don't want to miss future iOS 16 videos but anyways guys thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon